Hey everybody, Chuck here. Alright, subject of the day. Why the heck does my tire keep going flat? Well, there's a few different reasons it could be going flat. Most of the time, you're rolling down the road, you get behind some of these roofers, and hey, the roofers are needed. I'm not bashing you guys. I've roofed houses myself. I know what's up. But sometimes things fall off the truck, you got nails falls off, or you, there's a big heavy um, industrial area not far from here that where scrap metal has fell, fallen off the truck, and sometimes a little shards of metal ends up, ends up in your tire. But we're going to show you a few different reasons why you could be losing air from your tire, and I'm going to show you how to find them. And on one, one case, I'm going to show you how to fix it. Alright, here's the deal. The most common... All right, we're rolling down the road. You pick up some junk from your tire. All right, that looks suspicious right there. We'll come back and check it in a moment. We're rolling. We'll check it. And mind you, these repairs and these uh, things you can actually do on your vehicle also. This happens to be the spare off the back of my YJ. Yeah, I know it's a rough-looking spare, but I'm going to fix that here in a little bit. I'm going to get another tire put on it. But look at there. Picked up a screw. What do we do about that? First thing we need to do, of course, we need to fix it. I'm going to show you how to test if it's leaking. Plain old spray bottle here. Water and liquid dishwashing detergent. Or you can put some of your kids' bubble bath in it, or your wife's bubble bath, or I don't care, as long as it makes bubbles. Shake it up. You got bubbles. Spray it on there. Oh, man, we got a leak. Look at that. The bubbles are rolling out of there. Alright, let's just kind of wipe it down a little bit. Yep, we sprung a leak. Alright, just for kicks and giggles, let's check that other spot. Where's it at? Where's it at? Where's it at? There it is. It looks suspicious, don't it? Let's spray it. Nope, no bubbles, just a bad place in the tire. But you see how bad shape this tire is in. This is actually one of the tires that came on the Jeep when I got it. But I've got some uh, 31 1050s that I'm going to put one of them on this for a good spare. Now, another reason. Just lay this baby down. Okay, say you don't have nothing, you don't have a nail or a screw in your tire. Your next reason you could be losing air. Spray it around your rim. And sometimes it's obvious, sometimes it's not. You kind of weigh it out. Alright, let's put some more liquid on here. Around this side. Let's see these bubbles right here? They look kind of suspicious because they're foamy looking. Take your fingers. Okay. Okay, here we go. Look here. Let's see where to go. You watch real close on the bubbles right there. That's a slow, slow, slow leak right there on that right there. I mean it's just a bubble every now and then. But that a leak like that's enough after I don't know, three or four days, your tire starts looking low. Over here now, look at this. See how the bubbles is kind of cropping up there? Watch real close on the bubbles right there. Take them. And I wish the camera catched a little more detail, but we got some bubbles coming up right there. See, originally I knew this tire here was leaking anyway because I knew it was leaking around the rim. 
I'd already tested and that screw in the tire. I actually put that there on purpose to show you guys how to test for leaks in the tire. Uh, because as soon as I get this right here done, I'm taking one of my other spare 31-1050s and throwing it back to the Jeep and going to get it changed. Now, another reason that you could be losing air. Your valve stem, that Schrader valve inside of it. Tell you what. We'll do it hillbilly way. Yeah, that's right. I spit in it. And you watch for it, and you watch for it. No bubbles. Nope, that ain't leaking. But if it was, down inside there is a Schrader valve. Now, you gotta have a special tool to get that valve out. You can change them out also. Once upon a time, I had one around here, and I was just looking for it a few minutes ago, and I don't know where the crap it's at. I may have loaned it out and not come back. So when I go get my tire changed out, I'm picking up another one. I'll show you guys how to change them out sometime. If you watch real close, you still got bubbles over here. Ain't nothing you can do about this right here. I mean, in some cases, you can let all the air out of the tire, break down the bead, put you some um, brake fluid around all that right there, and it'll, sometimes it'll make them seal back up. More times than not, in this case right here, you got a dry rotted tire, that bead's dry rotted, and who knows, it could be trashed inside the rim right there. So when I take this thing to, for, to have the uh, tire changed out, I'm going to make sure they clean the wheel good before they stick the other tire back on. Now, the hole in the tire, the screw, let's get to that and I'll show you how to fix it. Whenever you have to plug a tire, go ahead and save yourself a lot of trouble. Get all your tools ready. This little string right here comes in little packs like this right here. You simply just pull one out, beat it through there. You simply stick it through that slot right there and just pull it through. Yes, the stuff is sticky. Uh, most of the kits anymore don't really need the glue. I use it anyway simply because the uh, strings, if they got any kind of voids in them, when the glue sits up, it fills up any of the voids that the string doesn't carry, doesn't fill up. So, all right, we got a screw here. So if you, if you had a nail or a piece of metal, just grab you a good pair of channel lock. You can grab it and pull that sucker and snatch it out. In this case, since we got a screw in it, we're not going the manual labor way. We're going to take and simply back it out. Now what's going to happen as soon as that comes open, you're going to start losing air, so you got to move fast. Especially if your tire's already low, you don't want to lose no more air than you have to. And one thing you see a lot of people do, do not do this. Some people get that screw out and they put their thumb over their finger to try to prevent the air from coming out. Don't do that. Simply because, I mean, bad as I am, I got a cuss at the moment. That's weird. But if you got a cut in your finger or something like that and you've got 40 pounds pressure inside that tire and you put your finger over it and you've got a cut, it can inject air up underneath your skin. Don't do that. Keep your fingers off the hole. All right, get the screw out. And basically, if you look right there on the side, you see that it's got like abrasions, like a vial. What that does, it gets the hole prepared for the plug. You stick it in there, twist it around. Leave it in there for a moment. Because now, we got to get this ready. What you want to do, take a little bit of the glue, and that's what sn stuff gets hot, it gets runny. It's hot outside right now, so it stuff's like rolling out like a bad runny nose. I right, put your little slime on there. That's rubber cement. No, you cannot use it if you're rubber bus, sorry. Get you a new one. Alright, we're gonna pull this out. 
do not put your finger over the hole, remember, just let the air go. And what you want to be careful of, you want to push it in there, work it back and forth to shove it down the side there. But make sure you don't push the string down inside the tire. Do you want to see it get that glue spread around real good? Then pull that baby out of there. Then just let it sit for a moment. Let me change the camera because the tire moved on us. Let's sit there for a moment. Get your blade. Get the string over a little bit. Cut from this side. Push this over like this. And there you go. Yucky. Why you want to do that? Simple. If you're going down the road and you got to be not sticking out your tire, it's subject to pull it back out. Alright, remember the bubble juice. Shake it up, get your bubbles. We're going to spray it on her a little bit. And you just kind of wait for it. And sometimes when you spray it, you get bubbles up around it anyway, so you just want to take your finger and just kind of smooth out the existing bubbles. And you wait for it, and if you don't see none, which I don't, we have made a successful hole repair in the tire. So, there it is in a nutshell, that's how you do that. Okay, I showed you how to, so much you got an air leak, my airline's leaking. Okay, I showed you how to fix a nail on a tire situation, or a screw in the tire. I showed you about the rim, how it's leaking, the Schrader valve, or the valve stem core as some people call it. Even though I have no idea where the crap my tool's at, it basically boils down to this. It's a little tool that uh, round, has a little slot in it like this right here. It drops down inside there, inside the valve stem core, and you turn it. You screw that core uh, completely out. Now you can buy replacement ones. Buy your replacement core, stick it down inside there, Take the tool stick in and just screw it right back in. Tighten it up, snug it, and you're fixed. That's all you gotta do. Pretty easy. Um, actually, you can spin the tire around. You can see this leak still going up. See the bubbles? They're still bubbling. So, there's not much you can do about that. Like I said, you can, sometimes you get lucky, you can break the bead down, rub you some brake fluid up inside there, soften that rubber back up. And it'll fix it, but most of the time it's temporary, or break the bead completely off, or get the tire completely off and get you a scrub pad, go around the inside of the bead, and scrub it down real good, clean all that up. Um, sometimes you got like pieces of rubber or other debris down inside the bead right there, cleaning that out. There's different situations that cause that. In this case, it's a dead, dry, rotted tire. So ain't much I can do about this one. I ain't going to anyways too wore out. Look at yonder, everybody. Remember that tool I was telling you guys about to take out the Schrader valve? Well, I ran across one. So, I can't complete the video without showing you how to use it. This here is a four-way version. Four-way meaning this right here will clean out, the inside of this, uh, clean out the inside of your core. I'll get it out in a minute. This side right here has like flat right there. And what happens if your core threads are bad inside your valve stem, you take out the core, they run this up inside there, it cleans up those threads. Now, if your threads are here, out here where the cap screws on, if they're bad, use this part right here, screw it up on there to clean up those threads. But the basis is, if this core up the side here, the valve stem core that you let the air in and out with, if it's bad, you want to use this end. What you do is, you put it up inside there, you'll turn it, you'll feel it drop and lock. Then you want to turn it this way. 
picture there looking out. So, then you'll get your new one, your screws all the way out, air will be rushing out like crazy. Put your new one up inside there. Screw it back in. Snug it up good. It ain't got to be ridiculous tight. Ta da! You just changed your straighter valve. That's all there is to it. Well, there's all the goodies I used uh, for the tire repair video. This little kit right here. Yeah, I'm sure you can pick it up online, but I got that in a uh, Walmart, I believe it was. I think the whole kit was like t less than 10 bucks. Uh, the rubber cement, you got to buy it separate. It's not part of that kit. Some people argue whether you need it or not. I do use it because once it sets up, I mean, it is a liquid, so to speak, even though it is kind of really thick, but still a liquid base. Because it kind of voids that these little strings do not fill up, the rubber cement will. Of course, then there's the knife, there's the plug I cut off of it. And there's my screw that I took out right there. And there's my soapy water that I used to diagnose. There you go. That's how you fix if you got a hole in your tire from a nail from a screw or a piece of uh, scrap metal that's laying on the highway. You get a hole in your tire, that's how you fix it. So, I hope that video became very good and useful for you. Get one of those kits to keep in, your, in all your vehicles at all times. You never know if you're on vacation somewhere and you happen to come out and discover that you've got a low tire. If you can find that leak and plug that leak, it could probably save you some time on your vacation. At least then if you catch it while your tire is still low, you can drive to the nearest service station and air your tire back up. So, keep one in your vehicle. And plus a few miscellaneous tools also that you may need for roadside repairs and such. So, there you go. That's how it's done. If you guys like my video, thumbs up. Subscribe if you haven't. And if you subscribe every time I do one of these little fix-it videos, you will be notified via email. Share the videos. Spread the knowledge. Therefore, you've seen the video, you learn from it. Share the video on your Facebook, on your Google+, Plus, on your YouTube channel. Share it. Spread the knowledge. Everyone wins that way. So, everyone, thank you for checking out my videos. Thank you for the subscriptions I've already gotten. Thank you for the great comments I've gotten. Everyone, have a great day. Peace out. See y'all.